Nine months ago, I made a video on how to draw with mouse, but you people wanted more. So today we will be discussing how you can draw with a mouse step by step, start from finish in today's video coming up. But before starting off with the video, I just wanted to mention, as always, my Discord server is now up and running. If you want to join, the link will be in the description. It's an invitation link. You can join. You can share your artwork over there. We can have discussion related to digital art and all the kind of cool stuff. So as I said, the link will be in the description. You can join right now. So enough with that. Let's just jump right into the main video. So in order to draw with our mouse, the first thing we will need is a reference layer for our artwork. But unfortunately, since we are working with our mouse instead of our drawing pad, it has its own drawbacks. As it's difficult to make your own reference sketches through a mouse, hence I will recommend you to draw your own basic sketches on a sheet of paper. Then simply click a photo of it on your mobile device and then transfer it to your PC. After you're done with that, the first thing you'll need is to import this image in whatever sort of platform you're using. In our case, since we are using Vita, first of all, what we're going to do is we'll be going into the top section over here in layers and we will be importing this image as a paint layer. But just by importing this image, it doesn't mean that we have our perfect sketch, which will enable us to draw with our mouse. We still have to make some adjustments because before moving to our line art stage, first thing we have to do is we will have to make some adjustment in our layers. As you can see over here, since the image is kind of really big for our canvas, what we're going to do is we'll be going to the transformation section. From here, we will be changing its size to around 50% so that it will fit the canvas perfectly. Now, in order to look through your sketch perfectly and distinguish between what is your sketch and what is your line art, we will have to make some changes in the sketch layer. The first thing we'll be doing is we'll be reducing the opacity, which you will obviously need to see through your layers. And then after you're done with that, just simply right click on the layer and simply add a filter mask. And inside the filter mask, we're going to choose and enhance the sharpness. This will make our image much more clear. And we will be repeating this process over and over again until and unless we have a perfect image. The number of time you will be adding the sharpness depends on what sort of image you have. In case it's really blurred out, you have to repeat this process a couple of times. But if it's already sharp, you actually don't have to do it. Similarly, we'll be adding another filter mask. But this time, instead of working on the sharpness, we'll be working on the saturation and the brightness. So we'll be going to the HSV adjustment. Over here, we'll be adding some changes in terms of your in terms of your brightness as well as your saturation. Now for the last time, press right click and go to your layer property section. Or what you can do is simply just press this three line icon and it will open up your layer property section. Now from here, you can just simply turn off your blue color channel. This will enable you to see much more clearly and precisely through your line art and your sketch so that you can easily distinguish between which one is the line and which one is the sketch because as you move along with the process this change which we just made over here will really come handy now coming to a line art layer if i had to draw it like normally using a drawing tablet i would have used this normal brush tool because it would have just simply done the job for drawing your artwork for us but since we are not using a mouse it's not the best option but still if you want to use this brush and you want to get the best results out of it what you can do is you can go into the tool options of this brush and over here we have different brush smoothing options. If you set it to none, as the name indicates, the lines you will get will be pretty jagged, wobbly, you don't like it, it's not desirable, something which our professional artwork doesn't have. The next option is the basic one if you set it to that, the smoothness you get is pretty basic as the name suggests itself, pretty standard, but again it's not the best for line art. The next one is the weighted one. It adds a little bit weight to your cursor and your strokes. If you're working on a drawing tablet, this one is like the best one. But since we're drawing with the mouse, uh, it will not give us the best result either. And the last one is the stabilizer, which if you're using a mouse will get the job done as it adds another dimension of mass and time delay to your cursor, which increases your precision. But again, it will just make your workflow really slow. But since you're using a mouse, it doesn't really matter because, because mouse makes your workflow slow anyway. But this one is the best one if you want to use it with mouse. But instead of using any of these brushes, what we're going to do is we'll be using the freehand path tool or freehand curve tool. However, you have to be a little bit careful with this one because it adds adjustments to your initial line art stroke. So it kind of modifies them. Hence, it kind of lacks precision. So actually, you have to just keep on making multiple strokes before you get your perfect line. Now, using this brush, what we're going to do is we'll be starting off with tracing our artwork slowly and steadily. To be very fair, many people are very spectacle about tracing artwork. As long as it's your own artwork and you're tracing just something you have drawn on paper, you can get away with it. Also, one thing to remember while you're making your strokes is that you don't make them slowly. You have to make them fast 
because the because the slower you make your line strokes the more jerk and shake it will register in the system and hence the lines will be much more shaky and wobbly so just try to make the strokes whether you're drawing with the drawing tablet whether you're drawing with the mouse try to make them as fast as possible because as i said the lines will come shakier no matter what here comes the tricky part what if you have two shapes or more than two lines intersecting each other for example this area over the eyes or eye piece where we have two lines or two shapes merging with each other intersecting each other how we're going to draw it so there are two ways of doing this the first one is you draw everything on one layer every shape on one layer and then you just simply erase it it is all the intersecting lines and you're done with it however this process will result in a slower workflow as well as there will be inconsistency in line art because you will be accidentally erasing a lot of stuff which you are not intended to so instead of that what we're going to do is we will be making both the shapes or all the shapes on separate layers and then we will be erasing all the overlapping lines later on another thing to keep in mind is that if you feel necessary you can adjust the line art according to your will using the transform tool for example in our eye piece over here it is kind of off the angle so what we can do over here is we can use the transformation tool adjust this rotation a little bit and yeah we're good to go and as we were talking about earlier as we are done with the separate line layers uh, we have erased all the intersecting parts what we can do is we can merge them together by pressing ctrl e and we just have to repeat this process over and over again with our entire line art and since i don't want to waste a lot of your time i will just simply time lapsing this entire process because it's just me tracing on top of my artwork so yeah that's pretty much it since we are done with the line art let's move to your basic coloring and for that the quickest way is to duplicate your line art and on that layer the duplicated one add all of your flat colors using the fill tool there are other methods of doing the same process there is a color mask technique which is really great as well if you're interested in that i have already covered that in one of my videos if you want to check it out the link will be in the description you can go check it out from there after we're done with this after we've added all the base colors we will go to our color layer right click on it and we'll be adding a quick clipping group and the reason for doing this is it will make our layer darker much more easier to manage and it also helps us not leak a lot of color out of our image now in order to work on our lighting and shadows we have to add two blank layers with their alphas turned off and we will be renaming the layers lighting and shadows respectively but before starting off with filling our lighting and shadow in the image we will have to go to our tool option of our freehand path tool because right now all the settings we have over here are for line art but now we will be using the same tool for adding the fills of your lighting and shadows so if we go to our tool options over here the first thing we can change is the fill option we can set the fill color to foreground instead of none or background the next thing is we will be decreasing the opacity of our lighting as well as shadow layers and with the black color selected for our shadows we will be creating close shapes using our freehand path tool and there you go you will get your fill shapes for your shadows and using the same pattern you can add highlights as well you might know that i've recently covered a similar video on cell shading just a week earlier over there we discussed exactly the same topic however in depth over there we discussed about how lighting and shadow in cell shading affects every single part of your face as well as we discussed about how it in general affects the different forms and structures so if you want to check that video out that will definitely help you a lot if you mix it with this one so yeah that was pretty much it that was the step by step how to draw with your mouse in krita or any other platform start to finish so at last again if you want to join the discord server the link will be in the description it will be really fun and if you're new to this channel consider subscribing because i make content related to digital art in krita and all the kind of cool stuff i'll see you guys next time until then peace